What up players, we're about to tear up in this mud back from the July painting challenge and I have got a treat. Today we are painting up the rider and shading our Mornfang, mo Mornfang model. <laughs> Part 2 of how to paint a Morn Mornfang by Warboss Tay. So the colors we use are, I have them all lined up here. Not, in no particular order, you've got Agrax Earthshade, Bugman's Glow, Dark Reaper, Rackart Flesh, Abadabon Black, Steel Legion Drab, Warp Lock Bronze, Thin... Oh, wait, no, that's not it. I don't use that. Mechanicus Standard Gray, and Raglan Flesh Shade. Did I do Celestia Gray? No. Celestia Gray. Okay, so uh, thank you everybody for watching this video, and thanks for your patience for those of you who remember I started this model back before the July Painting Challenge. I'd meant to finish it, but with the challenge in full swing, I just was not able to keep up and devote the time to sit down and paint the guy. So, Ryan Rancid Stains, Spunky, thank you for waiting. And for those of you, uh, some other people have asked when part two of this video was coming out, so thank you for waiting. Don't get discouraged by seeing the uh, shades really darkening up the model. With this step, the, the goal is that we darken it with shades and create some really uh, severe shadows with the wash colors and in part three we're going to highlight it back up so i know that the the brown on the back tusks look a little uh, a little a little funny right now but once it dries and we highlight it up to a nice white it's going to look good we're going to lighten up the jeans to make it look more like denim and the fur on this guy is going to look really awesome and the patterning is going to look pretty cool once we highlight that up but we got to wait for the wash to dry and um so yeah, so, so stay tuned for that, and thank you for following. For those of you who participated or watched the July Painting Challenge, thank you for all your support. It was great and super successful this year, and I had a lot of fun doing it, and uh, I had a lot of fun following all of your projects. So, uh, here we go. On with the show. Alright, you guys, let's get started and continue painting up our Mornfang. Calvary. First paint I'm going to use is Dark Reaper. And this is going to be for our guy's denim jeans. That's right. Our rider here is all up in the latest fashion. Okay, you're going to have to be a little bit patient with me. It's been a while since I filmed these, so uh, one of these tutorials, I want to make sure my Focus settings are, are all up to date. Isn't that right, Igor? Oh, yes, Monster. We miss your tutorials very much. What's wrong with you? Sorry. I was munching on some cat. Yeah, of course you were. Catsicle? No, no. Chili cat. It's like a chili dog. But you get the idea. Right, I love how these models kind of take the old ogre aesthetic, or the, I don't want to even say old because they're still using it. Taking that plastic, a plastic ogre aesthetic with the, the pants and the big beefy torso and just kind of making it a Cavalry Rider. Okay, so I'm gonna get all the way over. Tricky thing, if you've already glued your guy down, which most of you would have, why wouldn't you? Is that once he's on this mount, it's gonna pose some interesting obstacles to get through, getting all of the areas, like the belt, but we will worry about that when we get there. Alright, after you're finished, 
painting all of the uh, pants, trousers. You can also go, if you don't want to do blue, you could also do a green, like a strapping green or um, like a dark green like that. I've seen dark reds also, although I, I particularly don't care for the red color for pants. Just too close to the skin tone for me. Bugman's Glow is next. Speaking of skin... Why don't we use this wet palette I've got out? That's a smart idea. You just want to get this color on. This model was primed in black. Uh, it's for a commission job. I started it before the July painting challenge. I didn't really care for it, so I, I stripped it and I went back and uh, painted it up to this area or this this level right here and now we're gonna hopefully fingers crossed finish it or at least get to the shades tonight maybe we'll do a part three for the highlighting it's really easy once you get to to the shades and the highlights part okay this is why i'm using a kind of bigger brush once you get to the the front of our guy here like with the face you're just gonna start really stabbing it and you want to find all the different angles because the last thing you need is for you to finish painting your model and then be looking at it and turn it a certain way and oh no all of a sudden it's not uh, you see a giant spot that you didn't paint so I'm looking at you here under arms And don't worry if you if you get any paint on areas that you've previously painted. We're still in our first step of painting the model, which is just base coats. So everything can be fixed. You do want to make sure you get even coverage. Oh, nice even coverage. It's tricky, I can't really get to his chest or his stomach here because of the little gap there. It's it's too small for my brush, so I'm just gonna just gonna leave it and hope nobody turns him upside down. Okay, next what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some warp lock bronze. Igor! You small stew. Find me! My warp lock bronze. Here you are, master. Oof! Thank you, Igor. Wet palette, wet palette, wet palette. Alright. So we're going to look for all of the exposed uh, metal. I've painted, oh my gosh, I've painted ogre metallics so many ways over the years. There's so many different ways you could do it. You could paint it like this. You could also pay it, paint it, paint ogre metallics with non-metal colors to simulate rust like orange and browns if you want you could do a morn fang brown highlight it up with uh, some different oranges and wash it with agrax earthshade and then highlight that up with some some chipping 
and you could have a pretty decent rusted metal. But what I tried to do is look at the Games Workshop website and copy their Ogre models, their Mornfang models, and I noticed that they had this kind of tin bits, old school tin bit space color. So that's, I guess that's what I'm going for. Okay, uh, you got his helmet. I forget the paint underneath the shoulder pad here. Underneath the helmet. I watched a battle report on YouTube recently that featured a bunch of these guys used really, really well uh, against an, uh, a high elf army. And the high elf army had just giant blocks of spearmen and archers and all sorts of real, real crazy stuff. And these guys just come in on the flank and bulldoze right through them is crazy. Alright, how are we doing? Are you are we focused? I don't tell you how to do your job, do I, master? Yeah, I guess not. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is see what we got here. Oh, we're gonna paint the black of the boots. So we're gonna use Abaddon Black. I like a nice dark color, and the reason why I'm going with black is because we're going to use some some uh, tricksy tricks and techniques to highlight the this guy's uh, boots a little bit differently from the black fur of his mount, which will pay off with some pretty good effects, I think. Yeah, so if you've shelled out the coin to get yourself a box or two of these guys, two units of two, one unit of four with a dragon standard, uh, you can't really go far off. Can't go wrong. It looks like the jeans are still drying, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Warplock bronze and just finish off the metallic pieces. One of the aesthetics I find pretty cool, among others, is that these guys r just s bolt pieces of metal onto themselves as armor. Oh, like the, uh, their, their general characters, for example, just got pieces of metal all bolted over them and their man-eaters too. Crazy. Okay, next we're gonna do Steel Legion Drab on the metal of the club. I think most of these guys have have some um, wood, not the metal, the wood. So uh, any wood pieces like the wood of the barrel of the pistol, I mean the, the handle of the pistol rather, Stuff like that, any kind of wood. We're gonna try to do a, a little grain effect with it. Continuing with the warp lock bronze now, just getting the metal of these steel toed pointy boots. Forget to paint underneath.
Right, and we're also going to have to get these uh, metal bindings for his club. And it's okay if you get it on any of the stone part since we haven't even painted it yet. You don't have to worry about it too much. Sometimes it might be hard to tell what is metal and what is stone. Generally I like to check to see if there's an elevated part of the piece with bits of uh, rivets on it, and that's how you know those are metal. Anything without that, I just kind of take to be stone, and so I will leave it alone, like this, these two spikes on the back here. Yeah, two spikes on the back that are maybe in oop, stone right there. Igor, what are you doing? I don't know, it's been so long since I've worked this thing, master. Okay, I'm gonna do a little bit more Bugman's Flesh. You can see that if you leave your Bugman's Flesh to dry for a bit, it's going to show you where you were kind of quick and splotchy. We don't want splotchy. We don't want to see the undercoat peeking through, so. Usually I think two thin down coats of Bugman's Glow is enough for for most jobs. One thing needs another coat right there as well. So we'll get him. Uh, there's a rumor that there's a hurricane that's going to be coming in soon, so <laughs> on the news tonight there's lots of people going to their local markets and buying everything out. Uh, funny thing about hurricanes here in Hawaii is that you you take them all seriously, no matter how many false alarms or close calls there was, you never ever want to be the guy in the disaster movie that says oh, it's a false alarm there are always false alarms I'm not gonna do anything about it and then next thing you know you're sitting watching the tidal wave come so Morgan Freeman delivers his goodbye address well so do you just reference deep impact I did, I did. Alright. I'm going to try and clean up with some Dark Reaper the trim of the trousers now. So as you can see, we're, we're making progress. Every time there's a big mistake, or even a little one, like this trousers, I, I didn't have to go back to do it, but I like to be thorough and it's not going to take more than a minute, you know? Fix that up. Next what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some Morn Fang Brown and I'm going to paint the belt. And also what I might do is his facial hair. It's always tricky, because if your Dark Reaper is still wet, it's not going to have a very good finish. So you can wait uh, and do a little bit more first, but I think it's been enough time for me. I don't want to wait any longer. Poor Mornfang's been waiting. Ryan Rancid stains. Spunky. 
people who have been requesting this tutorial have been waiting for how many years now? Get a little too much water on my paintbrush. It seems to be a little too thin down. It's okay, I can clean that later. Come on, camera. You see how shiny it is? You can tell it's still, it's still wet. Uh, the part where, ooh, it's really bleeding through is right on where the belt meets the trousers. So I'm, I'm just going to let that dry for a little bit. I'm going to use my brush to kind of try and bleed the paint away so it doesn't pool. And then we'll come back when it's totally dry. It's funny, I was worried about the Dark Reaper being wet and ruining the the belt, and it's actually the Mornfang Brown itself. That's fine. Okay, we'll move on to the um, the bandages and such. For this, you're going to need Rackarth Flesh, which is our kind of standard wrapping slash bandages color. It's also your bone color, so we're going to hit all the bone as well. There. And you've got another bone here hanging from this belt. And if you can reach, usually it's the the iron fist, his weapon on the left side that has bandages around the arm or the wrist. So you're gonna go in with that rack hard flesh and hit it. Uh, that's not essential, though. You don't have to do that. I've got another one hanging right down here. I thought it was actually actually metal. My mistake. You see, tying his piece of armor to his arm is this wrapping right here. That's all you really need. Can't really see it too much from the other side, so we'll leave it at that. And I got looking pretty good. We're gonna take some Mornfang Brown and we're going to paint up his bracelet. Usually I like to look. Sometimes the uh, you'll see if the thing wrapped around his weapon hand is real skin tight, like a bandage, then I'll paint it with Rackarth Flesh. If it's kind of like this, a little bit thicker, then I kind of paint it up as if it were leather. Or in this case, it's kind of like tougher hide. So here on the inside of the wrist, you could see what I what I mean about the, the bandage look. That's what we're gonna paint Rackarth flesh. Whereas the other side it is gonna stay this nice warm fang brown color.
Worn fang, uh, racket flesh actually, oops, is going to be fingernails, so let's get that right now. And teeth. Just like that. Alright. Um, 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 um. Morn Fang Brown for the beard. I know they haven't kind of mongled, uh, modeled after Mongolians, Mongolians, but um, I'm gonna give this guy like a dark ish brown goatee. It's kind of funny. All right, I'm gonna take my dark dark reaper and paint up these pants. I don't know why they call it dark reaper. It looks dark reapers, Eldar dark reapers are like black with these kind of purpley highlights. And it's, maybe they're just running out of out of names. And get your rack card flesh ready because we're also gonna paint the little uh, t ties on the back of his pants. And get the loops on his belt. And you've got Doombull Brown for the saddle, if you need to clean that up. So I can see I'm getting some of my Dark Reaper on the saddle. That's okay, you just take a really quick swipe. And make sure you don't have too much paint on it and go at, and go at it from an angle to clean it up. Just like that. And boom! It's like it never happened. What are we missing? Oh, the, uh, the stone. Oops. So we're going to use Mechanicus Standard Gray for the hammerhead. Oh man, I hope you guys are all doing well out there. It's been such a long time since I filmed a tutorial. I feel like I'm... I feel like I've come home. Now if you're doing the character model who's got the pistol, then uh, just use the the earlier techniques I told you about for painting the metal and the wood of the pistol. It's going to use Steel Legion Drab for the wood and Warp Lock Bronze for the metal and for any of the bindings on the wrist or whatever. I think the the pistol hand had like bandages so you're going to be using Rackard Flesh to take care of that. <laughs> and it looks like I screwed up the wrapping on the knife here hanging behind him, so I'm going to paint that up real quick. Okay. 
every angle. Look at your model from every angle. God, it's happened so many times where I've painted something up and I've been so happy with the finished product. And then you look at it when you take it to the, the shop to play with or to enter a competition of some sort. Steel Legion Drab and you see that one part like right under the arm or right in the when you hold the model up a certain way and it's totally messed up you don't want to do that you don't want to be stuck like that so you want to just make sure when you're painting after you're done painting a couple colors two or three you just hold it up and look at what you just did before you continue. Now the opposite end of that two-edged sword is that you don't want to be too much of a perfectionist. I think the problem a lot of us painters run into is that we want to do a perfect job and there's no such thing as your perfect job. There's only what you can do what you can do at the moment to your best ability. So you want to do that and just not even worry if it doesn't look like the Games Workshop website, if it doesn't look like the thing you saw in Cool Mini or not, don't worry about it. It's not, it's not your concern. Okay, I've only got one more metal piece to fix, which is uh, on the wrist part. A little spike right here and I'm gonna take one look at my model okay I got a rack card flesh these little twist ties in the back I always thought <laughs> I always thought ogre pants were so silly they all had these crossed um, I don't know what you call them thingies at the back I always thought they were kind of ridiculous, so... Oh well. I'm taking the paint, I'm putting it on the very edge of my brush. And how are we looking? And I'm just gonna go in and lightly... just... flirt with these... strings. I'm not trying to do one quick stroke. I'm just... lightly feathering what I see. I'm doing rack card flesh because it's a pop of color. The uh, the more colorful you want to go, you're definitely free to do that. Okay, and here is our model ready for washing. So I'm gonna let it dry for just a second. And then we're gonna come back. We're gonna hit our guy up with two colors, Raiklin Flesh Shade for all the fleshy bits and Agrax Earth Shade for everything else. All right, we'll be back in just a second using the magic of film. Okay, let's get started with the Raiklin Flesh Shade. And <coughs> we're gonna be painting this all over the skin of the model. Hmm. Yeah. Like honestly, I I think this is okay, but uh, I've noticed that it leaves a very oily finish to it. Even when when I shake it up, I heard some people say that you do that, it takes away the shiny oily finish. But um, I, for some reason, I just miss the old ogre and flesh a lot. Okay, and we're going to be careful around this bandage there. With such a big model, um, when you get into the shades, you've got to watch where your brush is going. And you got to watch where the, the shade is going to pool, especially if you use a lot. You don't want it to pool anywhere and create a very nasty 
wash um, puddle. Okay, and then we're going to hit the little area right there. You want just enough to create shadow. That's the thing with using washes. You want just enough to create shadow, but you don't want it to smudge. Oh no! We got warp lock bronze on my flesh there. I'll redo that later, I guess. Right. Agrax Earthshade. Now this is going everywhere. So you want to make sure you have enough all over the entire model. I'm going to watch out it doesn't uh, pool, create puddles. Uh, you just want to create some nice shadows. Oh, sorry you guys, I was uh, running out of disk space like the minute I got to the most fun part of this whole video, which was the the, the washes for the actual Mornfang. I was saving it till last and I ran out of space, so uh, let's continue with the Agrax Earthshade. Uh, the great thing about the watch is that on the on these uh, figures, because of the fur, it naturally seeps down into the lower areas, into the shadows, and that's great, that's what we want. Uh, but like I mentioned, you want to make sure that you take care with how much you put on so that it doesn't pool and leave these nasty puddles that just end up looking very unrealistic. It's a tricky balance because you want to make sure that you s you have enough but that it's all going to dry naturally and look and give a very natural look. So what I like to do is just load down my wash brush with the wash, start it at the top and then just kind of push it down naturally and then if I see it building up in any certain areas then I'll try to move it along and kind of create a natural looking um, variation and kind of flow to where the wash is going. Alright, we're also going to put the wash on the Celestra Grey horns here in the back as well as, yeah, like we did the, the pants and all of the areas that aren't flesh, so the arm bandage here. Try to avoid the flesh. It might you you might get some some wash on the skin of the ogre. That's okay. Uh, this is a very fast step. It could be very fast. You don't want to take too much time with it because the longer you let wash sit, the more it's going to dry, and the harder it's going to be to create a natural look. If you try to move it around later, it's going to leave these nasty streak marks which which we do not want so we want to take a look at the surface after we're done putting the wash on it because sometimes gravity and time will pull the wash down in ways we weren't expecting so they'll just naturally like right here it was pooling right here in this one area so we're just gonna keep moving it all around I'm gonna make sure you get the wash on all the armor plates this Agrax Earthshade is going to uh, create some nice depth to your armor. The Warp Lock Bronze by itself is pretty good, but with some, some Agrax Earthshade, we're really going to darken it and give it a nice look for when we're putting in our highlights in the next video. Okay, then we're going to go up the bracelet here inside with the bandages. You want to hit all the little recesses in the skull. There's nothing worse than 
painting a wash onto something like a skull and then it goes over one of the eye sockets but then it doesn't really get into it and then when it dries it separates it disappears and then you've got a nicely shaded skull with a janky looking eye that depth doesn't match so you want to make sure you get some in the sockets and in all the all the depressions of the of the little bits but then uh, move the move the wash around so that it doesn't pool and create any hard to cover mistakes okay you see in the in the stone club here that there there is lots of there's, there's lots of little uh, lines, depressions. It's a very modeled kind of surface that was made, and so the wash will settle in really nicely. The tricky thing is that you don't want it to get into every single little pocket. You want to get into some of it just to show some depth like that, but as always, there's that danger of if you leave too much and walk away, gravity might pull that wash down into another pocket, you get heavy and pull it down into another pocket and pretty soon before you know it you've got a giant puddle of wash and it's gonna mess up all the work you did with the base coats. Look underneath the models as well because sometimes we miss spots and then that's almost as bad because then you have a piece of the model that's not touched by the wash that still looks bright and shiny from the base coat and uh, there's this oily slick wash all around it so we don't we don't want that we want to make sure we cover all of the areas get into all the little nooks and crannies and that's gonna be it next we play the waiting game and we wait for the wash to dry during this time you can do something else get into other painting projects Uh, put together that crazy new murder fang model, the Space Wolves, Wolf and Dreadnought. Give me a break! Logan Grimnar on a sled. What's that about? Okay, we're gonna end there. Thanks for watching, players. Thanks for your patience, and uh, thanks for checking out my channel. We'll see you in the next one for final highlights. Latest players.